So Madonna, I think in her music career, she's been a notoriously perfectionist and that's how she's got to the top. Do you think that's the same on set? Was she very sort of particular about things and went through things with it's you? It's funny that you use the word notorious. I would say famously a perfectionist. You know, notorious makes it sound like it's bad to <laughs> aim for perfection. Yes. It's extraordinary. <laughs> It is. It's a wonderful thing, and I. But I think that's also that's that's a real trait of an artist. I think I think, really, any artist is a perfectionist um, by their nature. So we were on a set full of perfectionists, led by um, the most famous perfectionist, and um, and that and that was a beautiful thing. There was a certain dedication and determination that everybody from Madonna to our crew and the cast in between showed on a daily basis it felt vital and it felt important and it, and, and and it it was a truly passionate experience but how much did you guys know about um, the whole abdication thing before was it something you did at history in school or was it very much later on that you found out I don't think it? I don't think that uh, British history really touches a lot on Wallace and Edward. They're always a kind of footnote in the textbook. It's always aren't the Tudors and the Stuarts. That's what you study at school. You do a lot it? of Tudors and Stuarts and sugared Stuarts. almonds. Um, Tudors and Stuarts, Incas and Aztecs. They don't touch on Wallace and Edward. Shanty towns in Egypt. Yeah. Central business districts. It didn't help in any way for preparation for this film. I didn't actually know where Berwick was. Sorry, Is it near Magic going... <laughs> but in terms of geography. Um, Let's not put the world to right right now. I think um, I think that historically, perhaps um, the population of, of Britain really don't know an awful lot about Wallace and Edward, other than that that they've been that what they've been fed. Which they, cer is they certainly didn't know much about Wallace before uh, Edward abdicated because there was an embargo on them writing about her in the press, and and that is. Not exclusively, but the predominant period of time that, that this film discusses is, is that build-up. Uh, and I think that that's something that the British public really haven't been privy to. It's hard to admit that you've been fed a lie once you've been fed it for so long, I think. Mm -hmm. Because uh, on first glance, you may think that they were Nazis, that they... Um, that that she was uh, spent a lot of time in Beijing in brothels. There were all sorts of stories that she was that she's androgynous, that she was a man, um, and that he was homosexual. There were all sorts of different stories. Um, you research for about fifteen or twenty minutes, and you realise that was all propaganda created by Stanley Baldwin's government. It was kind of essential that they were uh, shunted out of the way in order to let the new royal family have their time. Uh, very important for the country at the time because Bertie wasn't groomed to be a king in the way that Edward was. I think that m most public figures <laughs> are distilled finally down to about four sentences. And what's nice here is that it's the first time in a while that these two characters have been explored in a little more depth. Without interesting keywords as a footnote. The starting point's always the script, though, you are right. And, and um, really, any research that you do has to serve the script. And at the end of the day, that's what you're looking to serve. So anything that's useful, you keep, and anything that's not, you throw away. And really, you digest everything and then forget it all, because there's no point in doing any of that if you can't be there in the moment and explore what it might have been to have been them in that moment, the first time they meet or um, when he's on his deathbed. Yeah, I think all the preparation that, that you do for any role is ultimately so that when you're standing on the set, you don't have that forefront in your mind you're able just to sort of go with whatever is happening mm. so you pile it on in rehearsals and you really explore as much as you can but then by the time you're standing on the set you try to let it all go don't you absolutely